So now we're going to take a look at some of the reactions that actually affect the length of the carbon skeleton. Now we can increase the length, and in some cases we can decrease the length, but these are much less common. So uh, one of the things you want to do in a synthesis problem is you want to match up the carbons in your reactant and match up, match up the carbons in your product and figure out did the carbon skeleton change? Because if it did, you've only got a handful of tools, a handful of reactions that can accomplish this up till this point. Uh, so if we look, one of the less common ones and probably the least helpful one is just a straight up SN2 reaction here. So here we've got cyanide, so, and we can come in and do backside attack and kick off the bromine. And so we've gone from having one, two, three, four carbons to having one, two, three, four, five carbons. But we're kind of stuck with that at this point. We'll learn that we can do some things with nitriles later on uh, in second semester here. But for now, that's as long, you know, that's the only thing you could really do. Uh, but you do know how to turn four carbons into five with this reaction. But we'll find it's probably the least useful uh, for the reactions that actually change the length of the carbon skeleton. And here we get to the single most important way to lengthen the chain of the carbon skeleton up till now. We'll learn some new ways later on in second semester here, but this is the most important. Uh, and it deals with having a terminal alkyne. If you have a terminal alkyne, you can deprotonate it with sodium amide here. And so in this case, if we deprotonate one of the hydrogens off the side here, we'll form what's called the acetylide ion, as you learned in the alkyne chapter. And this acetylide is a very strong nucleophile, and then we can do backside attack if, as long as we have like a good, like, you know, methyl or primary halide, maybe secondary. And we'll come do backside attack, we'll kick off the leaving group. So, and we've just lengthened the chain. We started out with two carbons, and now we've got, you know, one, two, three, and however many are in this R group. So, big ways we can make the bond right next to a terminal alkyne here. And we can do the same thing on the other side, is if we started with uh, acetylene here at the very beginning, we've got two hydrogens, one on each side. We can pull the other one off now as well. So, with this, and we'll use NaNH2 to accomplish that as well. And now we can either attack another alkyl halide, uh, like we do in the top option here, we can attack a ketone aldehyde, so end up with an alcohol, or we can attack an epoxide and also end up with an alcohol. But in every case, we're still making the bond adjacent to the alkyne itself. That's the new bond we are going to be able to make in this case. So if you want to make your carbon uh, skeleton longer, this is the big way. Form an acetylide ion with NaNH2, and then either attack an alkyl halide, a ketone aldehyde, or an epoxide. If you notice one big difference here, both with uh, an attacking an aldehyde or attacking an epoxide, you end up with an alcohol. The question is, do you have the alcohol on the carbon you attach to, or one carbon further down the chain? Notice we would have attached our alkyne to this carbon. One further down the chain is when you have the OH. So if it's the OH is on the carbon you're attaching to, that's the evidence you've attacked a ketone or aldehyde. If the OH is on the carbon one further down the chain, not the one you've attached to, that's the evidence you've attacked and epoxide. So let's take a little closer look at each of those routes involving the acetylide ion here. So again, the first thing you're always going to do is add NaNH2. Uh, that deprotonates, it's going to pull off a hydrogen here. And so in this case, just a simple proton transfer reaction. So, and that's going to leave us with our acetylide ion here. And that again is a strong nucleophile and we can come and do backside attack as long as we had a good uh, like primary methyl alkyl halide are the most common. So kick off the leaving group, and now we'll have formed this new bond right here. So definitely increase the carbon chain, and if we started with acetylene like we did, there's another hydrogen right on the other side here that we haven't touched yet, and we can deprotonate again and get, us, uh, get ourselves another acetylide ion right here. And we can do backside attack yet again. Here I've used a primary halide yet again, and now we've made this new bond as well attached another group. So we can potentially do this twice as long as we're starting with acetylene, uh, but if you already start off with a substituted alkyne, uh, uh, as long as it's terminal, you can still do this once. Let's take a look at what happens when you add a ketone or aldehyde instead. All right, in this one, if we kind of take a look at the end here, we're starting with acetylene, and we want to make this carbon-carbon bond here, and this carbon-carbon bond here. And the one on the left will just attack an alkyl halide, and the one on the right, being that the carbon we want to attach to has the OH, that's the indication of either ketone or aldehyde. In this case, one thing to note, the order in which we do this does matter. So because we're going to form an alcohol here, so it turns out alcohols uh, uh, being protic are much more acidic than alkanes and stuff like this, and our acetylide ion here, whether it be here or here, they are not just strong nucleophiles, but they're also strong 
bases, and you can't have them with anything protic, i.e. an alcohol. So in this case, if you want to do this reaction, you'd actually have to make this carbon-carbon bond first and this one second. That way you don't have an alcohol present by the time you try to form the second acetylide ion. So this is really important. If you're starting with acetylene like we are here, so, and if you're going to make carbon-carbon bonds on both sides, if either one results in an alcohol, either from attacking a ketone aldehyde or attacking an epoxide, uh, you're going to have to do that second and just uh, the regular prime, uh, carbon chain first. And you can't attack ketones and aldehydes on both sides or epoxides on both sides. Um, that alcohol is going to terminate the reaction, just protonate your acetylide as it forms. Uh, in this case, we look at the second half of this reaction here. So our acetylide we form with NaNH2 again. So now we're going to come and do nucleophilic attack on the aldehyde. So, and in this case, so we're going to attach to this carbon right here. I'm going to make that this carbon right here. It's still attached to another carbon, so it's a two carbon chain. So, and now we're forming this new bond right here. And the carbon we attacked right here is the one that now has the O minus. So, and that's what step three here, H2O is for. We just simply protonate to add on that H right there. Uh, so that's kind of how the mechanism of that works. Again, you studied it in the alkyne chapter, so I'm not gonna hit it too hard here, uh, but just as an overview of kind of how that works. Let's take a look at what happens with an epoxide as well. All right, in this next synthesis here, if we kind of take a look at the net result here, we're starting with acetylene here, and we want to form carbon-carbon bonds and lengthen the, the carbon chain on both sides here. Uh, and as you recall, again, we've got an OH on this side, and anytime either side ends up with an OH, you're going to have to do that second. So it's going to be this one over here that will form that carbon-carbon bond first. Uh, in this case, we're just adding an alkyl halide, and we'll add NaNH2 first to deprotonate. That'll form our acetylide ion here. So, and then we'll come and do backside attack, straight up SN2, and kick off our bromine leaving group. So that'll get us our lovely terminal alkyne now. We've now formed this bond right here. So, but we'll add NaNH2 yet again, and deprotonate again. We'll form another acetylide ion here. So, and again, this guy's another strong nucleophile, and we'll attack our epoxide. And if, that, if it matters, we'll generally attack the less substituted side of the epoxide. In this case, it doesn't matter. So, and ring strain, kind of, helping this reaction along and it'll open up that ring. So we're gonna attach two carbons and the one we attach to is no longer gonna be bonded to the oxygen, it's the one next door. So here's the one we're attaching to, that's this one right here, but it's the one next door that's gonna ultimately have the OH. So initially, we'll end up with the alkoxide ion and that's again what we're adding water in the second step simply to protonate that oxygen. Uh, that's kind of the key here. We can lengthen our carbon chain once again by taking a terminal kind, deprotonating it with sodium amide, and then either adding an alkyl halide, a ketone or aldehyde, or an epoxide, depending on the situation.